Hey, it's Andrew Huang. Best is very subjective, but uh, I've never had this happen before. I put out a song and just got flooded with comments that are like, this is your best song, this is your best song, this is very clearly your best song, uh, which I was not expecting. I'm talking about my song, Cloud Collapse, which I kind of expected a lot of people to not like, and I'll talk about why that is later. Um, and also, this song dropped like seven minutes into a synth overview video. Like, uh, <laughs> it was um, a little bit buried. I really liked it though, and I'm glad a lot of you liked it, so I thought I'd do a full breakdown of the writing and production. My influences for this song were uh, The Beatles, Radiohead, and Johann Sebastian Bach, so just aiming right for the top. I think there's a lot of really interesting things to show you. Hopefully you get some good nuggets out of this that you can use in your own work. So the song starts with this synth. This is the expressive E Osmos, and um, the Osmos inspired this whole song. That's why the song was in my video about the Osmos. I came across this kind of dark flute sounding patch. It was really inspiring to play, and I basically ended up coming up with all of the different chord progressions I used in the song right at the beginning, just kind of collected different ones in my brain that I thought were cool and figured out how I wanted to structure them. The song is a really weird structure. It's not verse, chorus, bridge, or anything like that. It's basically three verses, though they each have different production and arrangement, and then a bunch of other stuff mixed in. So let's listen to the beginning of the song, verse one. This will be the easiest to break down. I believe it, but I throw so it's very simple. We got the flutish chords. We've got a bunch of little effect accents, which are all just this one patch from the Osmos called Entanglement. And then the drums and bass come in to do a really gentle build. Here there's also a sneaky key change mid-verse where uh, I was in C minor, but then I play D major, D minor, A minor, and that brings the tonic to A minor. Just uh, what I was inspired to play. So we end the verse with a pause, and then the next section we come in really full force with a lot more energy. And this is a section I came up with because uh, I was just experimenting with these chords, and the first chord progression has this kind of descending vibe to it. You can see I, I actually made a chord map, I called it, for this song because I was recording the Osmos to audio. And it was such a complex structure and, and some kind of weird chords that I wanted to track it all. So I just made a MIDI version of every chord that I was playing so that, uh, you know, it's just on this track with a basic synth that I could listen to if I wanted. But most of the time I kept it muted. So we'll listen to the Osmos. Here's the descending progression. You can see almost all the way through its downward chromatic movement in the bass line. And so when I was coming up with the next section, I just decided to try that concept in reverse and I climbed up chromatically. You hear those clicks? I didn't even clean up these non-zero crossing edits. Nobody can hear that in the final mix. Good job. So I'll play the section with all the instruments now, and um, this is much more powerful than what came before, but I've only added three more instruments. I've got two guitar layers, and then I've got this uh, lead also played on the Osmos. And um, yeah, just like all the other instruments, I was just going way harder on them. <laughs> Guitars are pretty basic. I think the one kind of interesting thing to note is I wanted it to sound like two different uh, guitar players. I played a little bit differently as I was performing, but also I used a different distortion effect on each. So on one of them, I have the Universal Audio Ruby pedal, and on the other one, I used a plugin, uh, which is printed here, but I was using um, Chimera from Mixwave. This is the best sounding amp modeling in a plugin I've ever come across. Love it. Now at the end of this section, I do another smooth little key change from A minor back to C minor, just wanting to keep uh, the verses in C minor, uh, kind of for consistency, uh, kind of for my vocal range. In the key of A minor, I'm playing the F chord. I turn it into a D minor, and then D minor going to C minor is 
it feels pretty natural. D minor is not a chord that's in C minor, but there are a lot of keys that do have both C minor and D minor in them together. So it, it just feels like it kind of works. So now we're into verse two. I'm really proud of the arrangement here. I just feel like I figured out a lot of different interesting things that work together really well. <laughs> So the guitars do this kind of chunky thing. Just a bit of vibe with those palm mutes and then a big chord every snare hit. And then there's this lead line that kind of fills in some space in the vocals. Bass is pretty basic. The drums are pretty basic though. Um, you know, I was trying to get my Ringo on for this fill. I think the shining star in verse two is uh, the ear candy. You know I love my ear candy. This entanglement patch on the Osmos just worked so well in so many different spots in the first half of the song. And on verse two, they really come through clearly. On its own, just sounds like a bunch of flying saucers, but with how I played them and where I placed them and what they're going along with. I just really like what they do for atmosphere in verse two. And maybe now's a good time to talk about the vocal chain because um, there was one chain for verse one and then another chain for verse two and verse three. So here it is, I'll just, just let you look at it. I'll open up the third party stuff. I guess the one interesting thing to note that I don't always do is uh, I've got my basic compression saturation, de breath control all set up here. Little hit of um, chorusing from the micro shift and then I go delay another compressor, and then some more delay and reverb. That is a bit uncharacteristic, but it just, you know, as I was playing around, it felt good to have that compression, bringing some of the echoes out, and then I spaced it out even more with spaced out. So that's the verse one vocal chain. Verse two and three have this chain. Here I didn't feel I needed that extra compressor in between my delay and my verb slash extra delay because spaced out is verb and delay. But this vocal is a lot more distorted. I went heavier on the saturator and then I also wanted it to be even spacier. So um, there is a primal tap giving us even more delay. This is also atypical for me to have this many um, space plugins on it, but uh, I think it really helped with the specific vocal sound here. So here's all of them off. Holding on to all I want to last. Echo Boy. Holding on to all I want to last. Spaced out. Holding on to all I want to last. Primal Tap. Holding on to all I And that one actually is subtle in verse two and then I bring it further in. You can see it automate up here for verse three. I believe it, but I push it down. So what was happening here is each verse uh, gets successively bigger in terms of energy, in terms of instrumentation. And so the vocal uh, felt like it needed to get bigger as well, um, both in kind of like distortion and harshness as well as space. Final thing about verse two, kind of a key change. I feel like there's a technical term for this where you switch from the same minor key to the major key, like with the same root note. So I'm going from C minor to C major just for one little chunk here, uh, just cause it felt right to do. And it does kind of feel like right for what, what lyrically is going on too, for a little hit of optimism. Normally this part of the melody goes uh, to the minor third. I drift like sleep. Then on the next go around, I go to the major third. On a and then it continues on into this spinning line. My favorite thing about this is that I found again in that entanglement patch, um, there was this cool thing I could do that sounded like spinning.
Then we have another dramatic pause. This song is full of dramatic pauses. And we go to the J.S. Bach section. I just came up with this Baroque sounding thing on that same flute patch. Again, a little bit of that entanglement sound effecty type stuff on top. And then when that part ends, it bleeds into the next section that um, I just came up with this chord progression that sounded like a church hymn. And I played it on both that flute patch as well as I added in an organ. And then uh, for some reason, I felt like it needed a funky solo on top of that. So I put a funky solo on top of that. Again here, we're kind of going back and forth between C minor and C major, uh, not just those two chords, but also um, at one point I think I'm using F major, which is, um, you know, you can use it in C minor, that's fine, but uh, it's also not the typical F chord you find in C minor, you typically find F minor in C minor. So just a, a very amorphous kind of thing that still has this church hymn vibe, I guess, because of uh, how the chords move, how the bass notes move. I do this uh, suspension thing that is very like, amen to me. <laughs> and then that bleeds into another completely new and different section that never appears in any other part of this song. This was actually not part of my Osmos video uh, because I, I didn't have it finished. It wasn't written in time when I was editing that video, but uh, I love this section. It's like tons of diminished chords, some weird drums, some counterpoint vocals, some of which are uh, vocoded. Just a lot of interesting flavors that I really like. The chord progression, I actually haven't even figured out yet what I was doing. I just I just came up with it and I played it and I was like, I'll think about this later. This is really cool, but I, I gotta write this song. I don't have time to think about what I'm actually doing. There's something really interesting about this chord progression that I'm gonna save for another video because um, it's just one of my favorite things um, when it happens in a chord progression. We'll get to that in the future. Subscribe. So here are the synths. They are all frozen, but uh, it was massive. And I think this one was Omnisphere, I'm pretty sure. They build up a lot. The beat is like a combination of a lot of different samples. First, there's this low pulse. This was some kind of a drum preset from Omnisphere. This builds up as well by the end. Then there are all these different samples that are kind of like just, you know, chopped up drums. I think my favorite thing though, is I grabbed this uh, sample of uh, waves of the ocean. Waves of the ocean? Ocean waves? The thing I love about this is that I warped and time corrected these waves so that um, they land on beat and they act as these swelling sounds uh, to go along with my drum beat. I just think it's so funny to like control the ocean in my music production. Now some cool things about the vocals here. Um, the counterpoint vocal, the vocoder, um, that was uh, Isotope vocal synth, but it's it's frozen here. And um, I was using a UAD Opal to drive it rather than its internal synth engine and um, modulating the mod wheel here for those uh, vibrato bits. A light on the stem of the nun flower with petals like black moths. Dreaming of before, 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 before. So a few different layers of vocoders, um, some of them with slightly different settings. I love to build up vocoder chords this way rather than having a, a full chord going through one vocoder. I just feel like it gives you more options for 
um, making the mix more interesting. You, you can get the chord sounding a bit cleaner um, in lots of different ways just by having the flexibility of them all being on their own tracks. And then for the non-vocoded vocal, um, some really fun stuff here that I like. I'm a memory. I'm a reverie. Again, all these effects are printed because this project was getting CPU intensive. But I remember the main ones I used. So uh, there's a formant shift happening here uh, from Alter Boy throughout the course of this vocal. So it sounds normal when it starts off. I'm a memory. And then it slowly goes into stuff like. I'm the shortest now on these two tracks, I've got a reverse reverb, and this is uh, also printed. You kind of can only do reverse reverb if you print it. You have to record it as it's happening and then reverse the audio. The method, if you don't know, is to reverse your dry audio, put reverb on it, record just the wet, then reverse that audio. So you end up with these awesome swelling effects. So that one is my whole vocal going through uh, the reverb, but the second one, uh, I just used a snippet of the beginning of each of the major lines, um, just to have an extra little swell into the line, but not more reverb that would be competing with the vocal. And this one, um, I also pitch shifted up an octave just because it felt cool. So that's it for that section. We have another big pause and then a nice drum fill coming into the biggest section, our long drawn out finale, which is verse three going into a super long synth solo. <laughs> section there's only one instrument that uh, you haven't heard before and that's just this extra layer on the bass. I put serum on again through uh, that nice mix wave amp emulator. Just adding an extra layer of dirt to uh, our already dirty bass line. I really like uh, the guitar part I came up with here um, where I my fingers were going into some weird shapes for some of it, but uh, yeah, this, to me, there were two things that once I came up with it, I was like, oh, this, I would not have come up with it if I hadn't listened to these two songs so many times in my life. I Want You, She's So Heavy by The Beatles and um, Paranoid Android by Radiohead. This kind of arpeggiated pattern and the types of voicings and maybe the bit of the guitar tone in the case of She's So Heavy just felt like kind of a combination of both of those songs. Actually, even just that top line, that's just Paranoid Andrew. Uh, paranoid Andrew? It's Paranoid Android. That's it, sir, and even the crackle. It's, it kind of deviates after the first bar. And then we go into synth solo. Um, love this part of the song. I love I love this whole song. But uh, the synth solo is very vibey. Again, uh, it's that same patch from before. Osmos going into the plasma. <laughs> And I start off with a line that I wrote. And then um, after a couple repeats of that, I just improvised for a bit, spliced a couple different takes together. At the end, uh, I thought it sounded nice to harmonize what I had soloed. And it just cuts off at the end, um, which I think has frustrated a lot of listeners. That's the only negative comment that I've seen about this track. And um, 
This is a direct reference to She's So Heavy. That song ends with this really long, drawn out um, thing where they're playing that arpeggiated type of guitar. I thought maybe more people would get that reference. I mean, it's the Beatles. And I even, I, I recorded some noise off my modular synth because in the Beatles song, they used uh, George Harrison's big Moog modular to create this wash of noise um, that builds and builds and builds. And then uh, the song just cuts off. Mine, I didn't have the noise take over the song quite as much, but it's there, it's growing. Also, look at this DC offset. It's like it's like the sound got sad as it was playing. Aww. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the response to this song because I was genuinely so surprised that so many people liked it so much, that so many people thought it was my best work. Um, you know, obviously I liked it or I wouldn't have put it out, but I really expected a lot of people not to like it because I did a lot of things that people have not liked in the past, but I think there was like a context shift that maybe helped me out. First of all, there's three synth solos in the track. It's kind of excessive. People would maybe think that was self-indulgent. One of them is very, very long, like, two or three minutes long. It's a lot of soloing. So that just stood out to me. And then there were three things that um, I've gotten complaints about before that uh, this time around just didn't really show up in any of the comments that I saw. One is uh, every time I sing in a song, there is some little handful of comments saying how much they don't like my singing or my voice or whatever. And I know I've, I don't like my voice. It's annoying. I made a video about all that. The song also has a completely unorthodox structure. All the verse sections are produced and arranged totally differently. And the whole rest of the song just goes from one new thing to another new thing. Like all these things you've never heard before in a row. And anytime I've done that before, people have also been like, Andrew, you gotta focus. I don't like how the track jumped around so much, but I really love through composed stuff. Um, that, that's what that's called, by the way, when, when stuff isn't um, repeated, but it's just constantly changing. And then thirdly, this was uh, me just changing up my sound, my genre. And usually when I do that, there is a lot of resistance, but this was just like a thing that a lot of people liked. I have a few different theories about all this, and I'm really interested in your comments because um, I kind of wonder like, is rock music still just a more popular genre than electronic music where uh, I've, I've done a lot more stuff. And then like, was my singing really that different from all the other times that I've sung? And then was the through composition more okay in a rock context where a lot of people were like, oh, it's, it's proggy rather than in electronic music where maybe there is more of a history of repetitiveness. I don't know. I guess if there's any little lesson here is just to like make the stuff that you want to make even if you think other people are not going to like it? Or is that a bad lesson because you should still make it even if you think they won't like it and they don't like it? I'm confused. Anyway, music is very strange and mysterious. I hope you got something out of this video that you can take to your own creative process. And uh, thanks as always for watching. Stream Cloud Collapse, it's linked in the thing. Bye bye. <laughs>